Hello and welcome to another video. My name's Axel. I'm Sean. And today we are here outside the museum of one of the most infamous and elusive killers in all of London. Active during the 1800s and once known as the Whitechapel Killer, he has become commonly known as Jack the Ripper. A series of murders that took place in the Whitechapel district of East End London in 1888 was blamed on an unidentified assailant who was nicknamed Jack the Ripper. Since that time, the identity of the killer, or killers, has been widely debated and over 100 suspects have been named. Though many theories have been advanced, experts find none to be widely persuasive and some are hardly taken seriously at all. Attacks ascribed to Jack the Ripper typically involved women working as prostitutes who lived and worked in the slums of the East End of London. Their throats were cut prior to abdominal mutilations. The removal of internal organs from at least three of the victims led to speculation that their killer had some anatomical or surgical knowledge. Rumours that the murders were connected intensified in September and October 1888 and numerous letters were received by media outlets and Scotland Yard from individuals claiming to be the murderer. The name Jack the Ripper originated in the now infamous Dear Boss letter. The Jack the Ripper Museum, situated in a historic Victorian house in the heart of Whitechapel, tells the story of the Jack the Ripper murders. As you make your way up the stairs, you'll see details of each murder recorded on the walls. The victims' names, ages and murder locations are shown, along with newspaper reports and illustrations of the crimes. As you explore the museum, you will discover everything there is to know about the lives of the victims the main suspects in the murders, the police investigations and the daily lives of those living in the East End of London in 1888. Then once you have all the clues, will you be able to solve the mystery of Jack the Ripper? East End Street. The scene is set in Mittar Square where the sixth victim, Catherine Eddowes, was killed. Her horribly mutilated body was discovered by a policeman, PC Edward Watkins, on his regular night patrol. First of all, I absolutely love how the rooms are set out like scenes to recreate where the murders took place. So that's a Freemason symbol, and there's a lot of theories that it was actually done by the Freemasons. Um, well, a Freemason. So Freemasons are people that are in like a society, and they're like you know normally doctors, people with a trade. Uh, so like blacksmiths back in the day, tailors, those sort of things. It's basically just sort of a, a society that helps keep um, things running in the community. Um, but also, there's been sinister undertones, and people have speculated that some of the killings were actually done by a Freemason who took the satanic side very seriously and uh, performed some of his rituals or in order to protect another member of the Freemasons. The sitting room. This is how Jack the Ripper's sitting room might have looked. Some believed that he was a professional man with a knowledge of anatomy perhaps a surgeon or an artist. Can you find any clues to the identity of the Ripper in this comfortable room? On 16th of October 1888, George Lusk, the president of the Whitechapel Vigilance Community, received a three inch cardboard box in the mail. Inside this was half a human kidney, along with a letter. Medical reports carried out by Dr. Openshaw 
found that the kidney to be very similar to the one removed from Catherine Edwo's. So someone sent a kidney. This is what I mean. Like, you know, they release so much to the public. And then people sent him, like, letters and kidneys and loads of evidence that could be sent by the real Jack the Ripper. Or could be sent by... Could just be hoaxes. Some nutter, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some nutter with access to a pig and its kidney. And they're, they're, <laughs> they've not got the science or technology to test whether or not that was her kidney, someone else's yeah, yeah, kidney, yeah. an animal's kidney. Whereas you know nowadays I mean? they would have been able to. Oh, 100%. The police station. This is the police station at Whitechapel, the hub of the police station. Inside you can expect the original whistle notebook, handcuffs and truncheon used by PC Watkins on the night he discovered Catherine Eddowes body. No way. So these items are real? Not that they've got much to do with Jack the Ripper, but of course it's the items that the policeman was holding when he discovered one of the Ripper's victims. Suspects that people might find quite surprising. I don't know if you can see that there, but, um, but it's actually Prince, uh, Prince Albert. A lot of people who were considered to be Jack the Ripper were actually immigrants or Jewish people, and that just speaks to the xenophobic and racist attitudes that people of those days would have faced. Um, you know, and that's just what happens when people are given very little information about things. And there is a series of murders going on. People blame the people that are outside the community when, to be honest, if uh, you, you know, looking at serial killers that act in this day and age, they're normally outsiders or people that aren't um, new to the community. That they're, 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 they're normally people that are not known within the community but have grown up and just have a. a lack of empathy or a self-importance that trumps other people's right to live. Imagine the bedroom of one of the murdered women, the women who fell victim to the Ripper's knife. Like many in the East End, they were trapped in poverty. They slept in rented rooms. They had turned to prostitution as the only way to earn a living. Most were addicted to alcohol. Not only is this a museum of the history, and it does give you so much information about Jack the Ripper and what the woods and coulds are of that law, um, but this museum itself is such an immersive um, exhibition, and I never thought that it would be that way, but each room is so theme is themed with such detail to give you that full immersive experience. Um, that it is quite eerie in some places actually, especially this bedroom that I'm in right now, just imagining myself in that situation back in 1888, it does give you that eerie um, feeling, you know, and it is a great immersive experience. I would add some bits to it myself, in terms of soundscapes and stuff, especially in some of the other rooms. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the props and the way that they've, that they've done so much of the small space that they have is fantastic. It's a fascinating insight into uh, classism and how people were, how these women were basically left to fend for themselves and weren't protected from them. Yeah, exactly. And then, on top of that, their murders weren't even, like, you know. Obviously the policing increased and society's gotten better since 1866, but then there's just, there's a lot of reflections really, isn't there? Like, you know, if a prostitute was murdered today, would it be trapped with the same seriousness as if a, a, a hairdresser was killed, for example? Probably would people, not. People, people would probably go, well... She put herself in a vulnerable position. I mean, look at the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the lack of empathy towards that situation. I mean, you know, and then all of the racial undertones that encapsulate the fact that people were, rather than looking for this English person who lived in the community, who it probably was, they're all pointing Maybe, yeah. were Polish and Jewish and Russian. Well, the reality is it could have actually been anyone. It could have but been, yeah. It could have but the, more than likely, the possibilities. I mean, if you go downstairs and look at the, the possible suspects, more than... More than, more than 50% of them were foreign. We're heading down to the basements. 
final floor of the tour. Lower ground floor. I just want to mention that we will be featuring this next part in the vlog and it will be featured with the utmost respect of the victims to Jack the Ripper. And there is now going to be a warning for anybody watching that this is a mortuary. It contains photographs of the victims' dead bodies and you may find these images disturbing. Yeah, that's the, the thing, isn't it? Jack the Ripper, he cut all the throats. Apart from this one. Apart from this one, yeah. 39 stab wounds, deep stab wound to the sternum, six wounds to the stomach, one to the heart. That just seems like a mauling. Like, that one's so different compared to the rest of them. Mm. Natasha and Emma Smith. But basically, those two were killed in a very different way to that of the other victims, which doesn't really fit the MO of the other victims who all had their throat cut and incisions to the lower and abdominal. Seven of them had their throat cut and one or two of them were killed in a complete different way. And I'm starting to wonder whether or not they were victims of a different murder and Jack the Ripper was just blamed for them because they were done in the year of 1888, which is the year he was the most prolific. prolific. Um, so, yeah, we'll never know, but it just seems like those don't fit. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. It feels like the majority of them, it was kills where they wanted it over with quickly. So it was a slit to the throat and then there was a few other like... Maybe, and then they like took out the and stuff, and stuff yeah. Out there, yeah. But it was like... Two or three of them, where it's just like it's just Maybe brutality. Yeah. yeah, it's like that really doesn't fit with the rest. Where it was, it would make clean, more sense. And clean, yeah, and over quick murder rather than the other ones. ones. That being said, though, the ones where it is the most crazy kills that don't seem to fit are the first two victims, and then the rest of them seem to be ones that were just the throats cut with that that was over quickly. So. But where did he come up with that? Because he didn't do that to you for the other two. Yeah. Who knows? So we have just finished our walkthrough at the Jack the Ripper Museum and it was very interesting, uh, well worth the ticket price I would say. It's one of those where it's more about learning than it is about seeing yeah. things that actually were there. And, the and way it's in they... Whitechapel so it's, you know, it's all tailored around the fact that it's near the location where a lot of these murders will have happened, which is eerie enough in itself. They've replicated a Victorian living quarters. Um, a Victorian police station, a Victorian uh, living quarters for a prostitute, and a Victorian crime scene, and a Victorian yeah, exactly. mall. The immersive, so how different, they help yeah. you to learn through the immersive experience that yeah. they give you is a great way to showcase yeah. history. Yeah, so it is one of those where they've done as much as they can with what they've got, and I enjoyed it. The way they, they do the displays, it, it forces a bit of interest because of the immersion. Rather yeah. than it just being uh, presentations of information, you're actually within the surrounding. You feel like yeah. you're there. And so it forces that interest upon you. So people that, in my opinion, if you're not so interested, you can become interested yeah. by the way they present it to you. It's 12 pounds per person if you do walk up on the door. If you book it online, you can get it for 10 pounds per person. They also do Jack the Ripper walks where they'll walk you around Whitechapel in the areas yeah. where the, the crimes were committed. That's, if you book it online, you get the tour and the museum 
uh, for £16, which in my opinion is an absolute bargain. Of course, we're not doing the walk today, um, no. but it's definitely something that we can, can come back and do. And if you just want to do the museum and just want to do the tour, then you can, can book them online at £10 each as well. You don't have to book them together. Yeah. That said though, well, that I would. it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After doing that museum, I really would want to do the, the walk as well. Yeah. So, my theory is that the Jack the Ripper, there was an American, and he wasn't mentioning that. This is something I've learned from uh, watching videos on Jack the Ripper and conspiracy theories. But there is an American serial killer who built the murder house, who actually was in Whitechapel in London in the time that all of these murders were going on. And he was a doctor, and he built a house in America where he murdered loads of people. And I think it's too much of a coincidence that a serial killer um, was in Whitechapel at the same time as all of these murders were going on. And when he left the country, the murders stopped. So that's my theory. But everyone's got their own theories and conspiracies. Let us know who you think Jack the Ripper is in the comments down below and the evidence that you may have to back that up as well. Was but it the Prince? Was it a Polish? immigrant hairdresser was it a doctor who knows but you tell us who you think it is in the comments down below and with that being said my name's axel i'm sean and we'll see you in another video